Hi, this is Suzanne Rest. You're on Art Talk, and today we've got Steve McKenna, who is a woodworker and who makes fine furniture. And he is going to take us through the process for making one of these beautiful works of art. We're sitting on Steve's porch in two very comfortable rocking chairs that he has designed and made. Uh, so tell us a little bit more about these rocking chairs, Steve. Well, I, um, I have been admiring Sam Maloof's work for a long time, and I decided that I would make a rocking chair that was along the designs that, that he, ma he made uh, in California. And I made this rocker uh, for myself um, a number of years ago, and then my wife said she wanted a rocker too, so I made that one for her. But I had to redesign it so that it didn't have arms because she wanted to be able to knit and she thought the arms would get in the way, which is, I guess, true. Most knitters feel that way. As a knitter myself, I totally agree. This is one of the most comfortable rocking chairs I've ever sat in. It supports my back, my legs are comfortable, my feet can reach the floor. This is great. So let's go see some of your other stuff. Let's stand up so we can get a good shot of the rocking chairs without people in them. Okay. So, Steve, thank you for being here. Thank you very much. Susan. Tell us a little bit about how you got started with woodworking. I started, um, I've been a carpenter for 45 years, and I started making furniture um, probably 35 or 40 years ago in the basement, in my basement shop. Um, I started with a skill saw and gradually uh, acquired tools until I finally had a, I have a pretty complete shop now. Everybody. <laughs> Everybody always needs more tools, but um, I have a pretty complete shop. I'm pretty happy with it. Okay, um, good. Now, when I approached you for this show, you said you were in the process of starting to make a rocking chair, and I thought it would be a great idea to present the whole process. So you took some pictures, so we've got a slideshow of the process. So let's just get started. What do you start with? Well, the first thing I do is take a trip to New Hampshire uh, and buy, in, in this case, uh, cherry planks. Uh, I bought um, three nine-foot uh, by eight-inch cherry, two-inch thick cherry planks, uh, rough sawn planks, um, and start by laying, laying out the pieces on, on the planks. Um, I start with the seat and find uh, a grain that I like. Um, in this case, uh, there's a lot of sapwood that shows. The white is the sapwood. And I match up, I try to match the grains. Um, I cut the lengths and then put them back and forth until I find the, the grain pattern that I like. And then I have a, a plywood pattern that I put on top uh, to lay out the seat uh, and the outside, cut the outside and the, and the inside seat. After that, um, this contour is rough sawn on the bandsaw uh, on each individual piece and then um, they're, those pieces are doweled and then glued together uh, as a unit. Ground, the profile is ground, is ground out with a grinder um, and then finished sanded and that would be the, that would be the seat. Um, then after the seat is finished, I cut out the legs, uh, a rough profile of the legs, and cut the joint um, to roughly fit, and then fit the joint, okay. put yeah. the joint together. Now, uh, I know that the joints are very important in any piece, so you were talking about just how you were doing that. So take us quickly through what it takes to put this sort of joint together. 
Um, the joint is called a double-shouldered um, bridle joint, which uh, there was a return of, there's a furniture maker, was a furniture maker in California named Sam Maloof who popularized the joint. So this is, this is another, an, another chair, basically, that okay. I'm making. That, I mean, I'm not making now, but this is another chair that I, I, I'm planning to make. And um, the pieces, I've already cut the pieces for one for each side for the front leg and the back leg, the way it's, they're going to come onto the seat. These are the outside pieces for the seat. So one right, one left, and then this is one of the front legs. So you can see that this needs to be rounded to fit the round, this round here. So when this goes together, these, these will slide together right like that, and they'll fit tight just the way that these do on this chair that's finished, the joints are, where the joints are finished. So after these, these are put together, glued and put together, finish, and then after the glue dries, there's a screw that gets driven, two screws, that get driven through the seat, into the seat, like this, and then this joint, this screw is thread locks the joint, and these are at a slight angle. And so, but when you get done, there's a, basically there's a threaded steel dowel that goes from the leg into the seat for the strength of the joint. That plus the fact that this is a double shouldered joint, the joint would never will never come apart. So on the on the chair here, you finish these joints, and you can see down here where you've put the screws and plugged them. Is that correct? Yeah, the, the screws are recessed, and, and then there's a plug, uh, a plug put in from the outside to cover the, the head of the screw. It's, they're in about, oh, maybe a half an inch inside the, inside the leg. And that's a really strong joint? That joint will never come apart. <laughs> the piece will break before the joint comes apart. Okay. So after the seat and the, and the legs are glued up and, and put together, then it's time to fit the, uh, the arms. The arms start out as, uh, once again, they start out as a full two inches thick, um, six inches wide. They get fit at both, end, both places uh, and then shaped uh, rough shaped first with a bandsaw and then ground down with a grinder and a, and a sander um, until until they're at a point where I feel comfortable in fastening them uh, to the seat and to the rest of the frame and um, and then the whole chair without the back gets uh, ground and it's called fairing when you make a a joint so that it, the profile comes down and meets the other profile. Mm -hmm. um, all the joints get fared uh, between the seat and the arms and the, uh, and the legs. Mm. Um, at that point, at that point, I'm ready for the back. So the, the uh, back splats are glued laminated um, with a piece of, uh, of hickory in the center and then a piece of cherry on the outside. So the cherry you, will show. How do you get the shape? The, the way that these uh, are made is that they're glued into a, or glued and clamped onto a form um, the, in this shape. And I'll show, you the, I'll show you the form. Do you make a separate form for each chair practically? Or well, I was, sort of but then, I was, but then this one worked so well, I started <laughs> using it for all of them. I, this is the same form that I used for, um, the armless uh, maple rocker upstairs, the, the, it was the same form, and it's the same form that I used for the, uh, uh, the walnut rocker as uh -huh. well. So I've used it three times now, and then I used it for the, uh, the headboard of my son's bed that I'm making too. Hmm. Um, so these will go about like that. There'll be seven of them across, and they, Suzanne can testify to the fact that they give you good back support when they when you sit in the chair. 
um, right at the spot where you need it. And let me just interrupt here to say that when you sit in this chair, your first reaction is, I never knew a chair could be this comfortable. I've sat in several of the chairs that Steve made, and every one of them has just been, ah, <laughs> really nice. All right, back to the back splats. The back splats are the same as uh, are made the same as the uh, the rockers are. Um, they're laminated out of out of uh, pieces of uh, the rockers are laminated out of one eighth inch pieces of cherry. So Steve, after cutting the laminate pieces, a question came to me: Does it make a difference which side of the piece of wood you're using in terms of the strength or flexibility? Since I understand these are going to be curved, shaped. Um, well, it, it it matters only in that they're easier to bend if you cut um, if you cut them with the grain running across this way. They bend easier. Um, the it's called flat sawn when they, when you cut it that way. Um, it does make a bit of a difference in in bending. Uh, in this particular case, there's not enough of a bend really to make a difference. I could have cut it either way, but I did plan on cutting it. Uh, I did plan on cutting it this way because I, I thought that it would be stronger. Good. Okay. Thanks. Laid up in a form, glued and laid up in a form, and then clamped uh, very tightly, so they uh, take the form of uh, take the shape of the form, and then um, I laminate uh, layers little platforms that the legs st sit on uh, on top of the on top of the rocker itself uh, and then they get fit and glued to the bottom and there's dowels that come up through the that hold the two of them together um, and the back splat go then the back splats get put in at, at all at around the same time. The black splats go into the seat and the back uh, and into the crest rail. The crest rail is cut out of a piece. Um, I look for a piece with a, a lot of nice grain in it. I'll and shape the top part. You're keeping that knot as sort of a focal point or the a knot, little visual? Uh, it is. Uh, I, um, I don't mind knots in my work. I, I think that... It, contrary to the old timers' belief that everything should be knot free, um, now there's not that much wood used in furniture, and so I think it's nice when there's a distinct statement about the fact that this is wood. This isn't something man-made, and this is part of the natural form that the wood has taken. Um, and the, besides the fact that in a knot like this, the grain is is probably spectacular. It, it generally is. Um, when this gets all finished, these, this grain, maybe most people won't notice, but I will. <laughs> and the, the grain is going to be, uh, is going to be something else. It's going to be really be a, a statement. So that gets rough sawn, shaped, uh, the holes get cut for the spindles, and then that whole, that whole assembly goes together and gets glued. Then there are a couple of screws, the same as in the legs, a couple of screws go in the side to hold it all uh, tight. Now, do you always put a little handle on the top of your chairs? Well, no, actually, that was a little, it wasn't even an afterthought. It was just something that ended up being there. I, I, uh, that leg happened to be six inches longer than the other one, and I didn't bother cutting it off while I was making the rocker, and then... When it all got to the point where it was time to either cut it off or whatever, I said, I think I'll do whatever. <laughs> and I made a thing you could hang your hat on. Very nice. Just a little quirk. So it makes it unique. Well, it does, although the chair itself is, I haven't seen very many like them. Mm -hmm. And then once it's all together, what's, what's the final step? Well, then, step? then it gets a coat of... Uh, it gets, it gets sanded, which sanding is one of the most tedious but uh, and time-consuming things. I sand from, I start with uh, 60 grit on a grinder, and I go up to uh, work through the grits uh, and sand the whole thing with each grit 
until they get up to 1,000 grit, uh, which is the final, the final uh, sanding is with 1,000 grit, which is basically, uh, it's a polish. Uh, it's polishing the chair. Nice. And then it gets a coat. It, this particular chair right now has been sealed. It has one coat of uh, finish on it. It gets four more yet. Um, it gets three more coat, two more coats of uh, oil, uh, an oil urethane mix, and then it'll get two coats of uh, oil wax mix after that. And it gets applied and then rubbed off, rubbed in, and then wiped off. That's a lot of work. It is a lot of work, but you know, it's kind of nice when it gets done. Oh yes. So. When you what who who ends up with a chair like this? Well, this chair uh, is for sale. Um, whoever wants to buy it, uh, it, I'm selling my work. And you currently have a show going. Well, there's a, a gallery. A show? Yes, this show. Th this was actually built to go on a gallery show. It's called uh, Gallery Blink. Um, it's uh, next to St. Bridget's Church. It's a person's house, Jillian Ross, uh, her house. Um, and uh, it's going to be, the chair is going to be showing up there. It's on Mass Ave. Nice. Very nice. Now, um, what made you decide to use cherry? Any particular well, reason? I just, I hadn't made one with cherry. I made, I made one with maple. And I made one with walnut, black walnut. Uh, and a lot of people are fans of cherry. Um, and I thought that with the grain, the grain that cherry exhibits, uh, it would probably come out pretty nicely. Um, and I'm pretty happy with it. I think it came out okay. Yeah. The, the grain shows up pretty nice. Um, I particularly like the grain in the crest rail. And the fact that this, I like cherry be, uh, in a lot of ways because it has uh, sapwood, which is the late, late growth in a tree, is called sapwood, and it's always uh, lighter than. Um, so you sort of framed the the seat of the chair using the sapwood here. Yeah, yeah, and the interesting thing with cherry is that um, you can put it you can put it in the sun, light will darken it. So if this sat in the sun for a half an hour or an hour, you'd, it'd be noticeably darker. If you put a piece of paper in the middle of this chair and set it in the sun um, and then took the piece of paper off, it's almost like a photographic ne negative. It, it, uh, you end up seeing a lighter spot where the, yeah. where the paper was. So that if you want to keep the chair the same color, you don't put it out in the sunlight. Is that even well, if it's, it's sun it's, coming in from a window? Yes, yes. Hmm. Things I didn't if you, know. Yes, any piece of cherry <laughs> is that way. If you put a piece of cherry so that it's half shaded uh, through most of the day, you'll notice that it, it isn't it isn't terribly noticeable, but it is. Is that a look, permanent? It's noticeable. Is it a permanent no, it's color not. change? You can put the whole chair in, in a uh, in a window, and it'll all darken to the same degree. And does that darken fade, or is that per a permanent? It's color pretty change. permanent after unless you sand it down. It's only on the surface. Hmm, I never knew. That's why it, old cherry things look so dark. Oh, okay. So once you take this home, how would you take care of this, this sort of piece? There's not a lot to do. It, um, it, you just keep it clean. Uh, you can wash it with soap and water and keep it clean. And uh, um, that's all. It really, uh, it's the, the final coat is is a coat of ice grade beeswax and uh, tongue oil and linseed oil and mix the three of them together and put a coat on and you could put another coat of that on if you wanted to at some point but it's not necessary you could just oh. polish it nice very nice so i want to stay, thank i want to thank steve this has been very informative and very who knew? You know, you see a nice piece of furniture, you don't realize the amount of work that an artisan has put into 
to creating it. And now we have some idea, because I think, Steve, you said this was over 200 hours worth of, of it does. work. It does. It takes 200 hours. Uh, so if you want a nice piece of furniture, you know where to go, you know how to take care of it, and you realize the amount of work that has gone into it. Steve, this was really interesting. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Suzanne. It was a pleasure. Good. <laughs>